Welcome to this video about staff travel as an Australian flight attendant. I'm Bree and I'll be sharing my journey back home to Melbourne from Osaka, Japan, along with some helpful tips and tricks for staff traveling. Join us as we share our story, insights, and most importantly, our unforgettable experience of the most stressful staff travel ever. Buckle up and let's get started. Hey guys, so we're just in our hotel room in Kyoto, just packing everything up. There's my husband, Brayden. Hello. And I wanted to start off with a little tip because this is the first time that we've traveled internationally with only carry-on suitcases and it's literally been game-changing because we don't have to worry about our bags being checked in then if we potentially don't get on the flight we don't have to go find our bags you know in the random baggage carousels and stuff like that <laughs> First of all, we need to get to the airport. So we're heading on the trains to get there. It's gonna take us three flights to get home, potentially four flights. If we don't get on potential flights that we wanna get on, we might have to do some rerouting and stuff. So we're flying from Osaka, Japan, to Hong Kong, and then to Sydney, Australia, and then to Melbourne, Australia. So yeah, it's gonna be a journey. It's gonna be over like 15 hours, I think. Wish us luck. <laughs> Hopefully you can hear me. Basically before I catch a standby flight, I check the loads. The loads meaning how many people are gonna be on the flight so I can see how many spare seats there are to see if we have the potential option to be able to actually get on. And I do that through this app called the Staff Traveler app. So I checked this Staff Traveler app because you can put requests on potential flights that you wanna take and then people from that airline can put in the loads for you. It does cost a little bit of money to buy like some tokens and then each flight that you you request the loads of you pay with a little token and so basically I have the loads for our flights but one of our flights is red which is our flight from Hong Kong to Sydney and it has minus two seats in economy so I'm worried that we won't be able to get on that one so I've just been on my laptop and I've looked at a potential later flight that leaves Osaka Airport goes to Hong Kong and then Hong Kong to Melbourne it was kind of our backup plan if we won't be able to get on the flight that we originally wanted to get on what I've done is I've requested those flight details on the app and they actually look really good I'm gonna hold it for me thank yeah. you <laughs> it's like hurting my arm yeah. the first flight has 40 seats available and only seven people on standby and then our second flight from Hong Kong to Melbourne has 23 seats available and 12 people on standby so there's more of a potential to get on that flight the only con is it's like almost two hours later than the flight that we were originally gonna go with I think we might just what do you think I think we should go on the later one because it's direct to Melbourne where the, the one we were gonna go on is going to Sydney first and we only wanted to go on that one first because we thought oh We'll try the earliest flight of the day just in, just in case we yeah. don't get on and we have backup plans. But the, backups, yeah. the first plan looks bad, the, the backup plan looks better, so maybe just go on the backup plan. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And that way it's only two flights instead of three flights, so maybe it even works out better for us. Yeah, and I think we'll get there at the same time ish anyway, because yeah, we have to so. fly from Sydney to Melbourne anyway, so. Yeah. It's later, no worries. Anyway, so this is probably a con of flying staff travel because to be honest, it's something that I've been quite stressed about because I actually start work the day after we get back. So I have to get on a flight today or else I won't be able to make it back in time for work. And that's really bad if you work as a flight attendant, you like, you can't be staff traveling back <laughs> and miss a shift. We almost didn't come on this trip because we're worried about the flights. We saw that the flights to Tokyo were bad yeah. or coming home was bad and we thought, oh no, we, we don't want to risk it. So that's kind of why we're staying in Kyoto almost is because we, we thought, oh, we actually could try a fly in through Osaka Airport, which we've done. So what are you doing? We're booking the later flights. So the flight that goes from Osaka to Hong Kong, Hong Kong to Melbourne, just because that has a higher chance of getting on. And there's also a little smiley face here on the screen. That's a good indicator. And also the Staff Traveler app that I talked about before, that says that there is enough seats on both flights. So we're gonna do that one. And yeah, we're excited. Let's book that in now. So while I'm booking these flights, maybe I'll talk a bit about how much it costs to fly staff travel and all that kind of stuff. So with my airline, I get a discounted rate on my airline and also partner airlines. One of the partner airlines is Cathay Pacific. The flights that we're booking right now, it's gonna cost us $620 AUD, inclusive of my flights and Braden's flights. 
That's like a really good deal if you ask me. <laughs> really good <laughs> and to fly Japan it was around 500 inclusive so this trip in total cost us on flights just over a thousand dollars which is really good since we flew two flights to get here and we're flying two flights home if we were just doing a single flight home it would be a lot cheaper but those flights are really full so we're not doing that <laughs> anyways I thought I'll just share that and also within my own airline I get a thousand dollars worth of travel credits that I can use on flights for my particular airline and then anything after a thousand dollars I have to pay for but yeah the flights are like so cheap so those travel credits are only from my company and can be used on my company's airline flights so I don't get free flights but I do get the thousand dollars worth of travel credits which is amazing so there you go if you're ever curious about how much stuff travel costs <laughs> there's a little insight um, of course it's different with each destination and the price that I shared with you is the economy price so if we were wanting to fly business or anything like that then it would be a lot more expensive so we're all booked and we're gonna try and check in it is a bit early it's about four hours early but we're just gonna see if we can check in see if we get our tickets and just go from there hey guys so the update is that we got boarding passes for our first flight which is amazing the second flight we haven't got our boarding passes yet we have to go standby so when we get to Hong Kong we'll have to go to the gate and check in and all that jazz and hopefully they'll give us a ticket it was really good that we did change to the Melbourne flight instead of going to Sydney because the gate agent said that there was no chance of us getting on that Sydney flight smart thinking by us so that Star Traveler app is amazing it's still a bit nerve-wracking not actually having a ticket for the second flight because when we flew here from Melbourne we got both our ticket straight away so yeah there's a bit of hesitancy like we're we actually going to get on the second flight putting out positive vibes it is normal to not get your boarding pass until you get to the gate but last time we were really lucky and did get them so that just was like a stress-free experience whereas standby can be pretty stressful because you don't know if you will get on <laughs> which yeah it's stressful the flight's not until about three more hours so we're gonna get something to eat and enjoy our time at the airport We made it which is great and I've never sat at the back of this plane before this is a triple seven three hundred and um, the doors are right here and the galley and everything hey guys I don't know if you can hear me but I'm in the laboratory we're landing into Hong Kong in about 40 minutes which is so exciting and then we'll find out our fate this flight has been so smooth the crew have been amazing, we've loved it. We arrived into Hong Kong airport and we're just walking to the check-in desk now to see if we can get on the next flight. Wish us luck. <laughs> so there's a Cafe Pacific employee standby area. It's in area A if anyone's wondering. So we haven't got boarding passes yet. We have to wait 50 minutes before the flight departs to get them because there's actually a lot of people on standby. There's 20 people on standby and there's 20 seats available. So we're just having some Japanese snacks. We got these cheese ones from 7-Eleven, they're really nice. This is what we bought when we went to the temple. We got this from Kyoto Station, it's like a glazed donut. This is our dinner. <laughs> <laughs> okay guys, it's been the most stressful like two hours of our lives. I think I updated you guys about how we went to the check-in but we weren't able to get a ticket and they say come back at minus 50. So we were like stressing. We were about to buy a full fare ticket. And this whole vlog could have been ruined. No, I'm just kidding. That's <laughs> still cool i guess we would have Anyways. bought a full fare ticket for me because i desperately need to get back home because i actually start work and there's no other flights that i can take this was like the plan b and c as you would have seen because we were going to take another flight before this anyways so we we're going to buy a full fare ticket it was 900 and just say something. almost a thousand australian almost, almost a thousand dollars yeah. australian we were literally about to buy it and we were like do you know what let's just go back to the desk like it's not minus 50 right now like there's still another hour and a half before the flight departs and we're like we'll just go to the desk and we'll just chat to the lady and just see if we can find out any information on what the loads are and where we are on the list and all that jazz we also wanted to 
to find out like would you recommend buying one like yeah. if we did buy one if we did, could we still get on and maybe cancel maybe that flight refund, like just wanted to know what our options are right, so we went back to the desk we lined up there were so many people there waiting for the time where they were gonna find out if they got on the flight we spoke to the lady and we're like hey just wondering like what did we even say I, I think she know. wasn't even listening to us I think we, just, we were just like we're she heading just said to Melbourne. like Melbourne and she's like oh what's your name and then she's like she grabs a piece of paper rips it up and then she's like tapping on the computer and, and then and then we got photo buses <laughs> both, both of us got them yeah it's so like it's the better. biggest really for my life now Brayden isn't stuck in a foreign country <laughs> yeah I know because she asked us oh like is it okay if we separate like if one of you can get on would you want to do that and we said yeah, yeah. so Brie was the priority yeah and I was literally prepared to just stay here for the next 24 hours or something which was so you can get on a flight <laughs> So if you start traveling, just know this is stressful. Like this is it's very hard, stressful. but I mean, you get what you pay for. Definitely. This is probably the most stressful I've ever been when staff traveling, I would say. Yeah. Wouldn't you agree? I've probably given Braden hell the last like <laughs> Because to be honest, half. like we were thinking like we should just buy that flight because we were yeah. like, what's the worst case scenario? Like worst case scenario if you <laughs> buy the flight and then somehow could have got on stop travel. Worst case scenario is, oh well we spent money. We spent extra money, but and at then, least we got home in time and had peace of mind and stuff like and that. And the worst case scenario the other way is if we didn't make the flight. Yeah, that's then even worse. Then you freaking worse. screwed. Like, I, I don't know. I don't happens. know. I would probably get in a lot of trouble. <sighs> I was so relieved. Also, grateful we are only bringing carry-on baggage. Yes. Uh, really, that reduced some stress. Like, yes. had to check in, that would be even more stressful. Yes, yes. Um, because that just would have, like, reduced our options as well. Like, Definitely. if we are going to buy something last minute, it's hard to do with the check-in baggage. So, yeah. All right, just... we're going to go through security and head to our gate. Let's Woo, go. Let's go. We made it on the flight. Yay. Let's go home. Oh my gosh, oh my I can't gosh. believe we are in Melbourne. Like, it worked uh, out. No, we actually made it. Oh, we didn't, we didn't need these. <gasps> So happy to be here and so happy we actually got on the flight. Yes. What an adventure. What a out. stressful adventure. <laughs> but would you say that summarizes stuff travel in general? It's always like the stressful yes. moment. I guess it's only most stressful like on the way home it's not like, important. Like if it's just like yeah. a, trip, a holiday and it doesn't really matter what time or day you get there, no biggie. And also if you're going to a destination and you have things planned like a tour or another flight or I don't Pairs know, something opera. like that the opera. <laughs> Then, yeah, you know. yeah. <laughs> yeah, then it can be stressful too. We're happy to be home. We're tired. It's 12 p.m. here. Can't wait to get home. When I get home, I'll sit down and answer the most common asked questions about staff travel for you guys. So stay tuned for that portion of the video as well. It's the next day and I went to work this morning. <laughs> Luckily, I got on that flight yesterday or else I literally don't know what I would have done. Um, it would have been a literal disaster. So yeah, I'm just very grateful that everything worked out for me. I'm very lucky. <laughs> they said in the previous clip, I want to go through some frequently asked questions for you guys. So I have seven frequently asked questions about traveling standby. Okay, first question is, what is standby or staff travel and how does it work? So staff travel is a benefit that airline workers get and that is where they have the option to purchase a standby airline ticket which is basically a ticket at a very reduced price but it doesn't guarantee them a seat on the aircraft it just means that if there's a spare seat that hasn't been purchased by the general public they can sit in that seat and how it works is I have an online portal that I can access and I can book flights through that portal where or when can I fly standby when you can fly standby whenever really there's no restrictions on that in terms of where you can fly standby it really depends on what airline you work for and what partner airlines they have available in my personal experience my airline flies mostly within Australia and only a couple international routes so when I flew to Japan I used one of our partner airlines which was Cafe Pacific and then when I flew to America last year we went through United which is another partner airline each airline has different partner airlines so it just depends what airlines they are partnered with and what destinations those airlines fly how do I know which flights have open seats available for staff travel I showed you that staff traveler app that's brilliant get on that if you don't have have it already there are some Facebook groups as well where you can request certain loads on the flights 
that you want. Some airlines have apps that allow you to see what seats are still left on the plane. So when we flew to America with United, we downloaded the United app and it had the plane layout and it had the seats that were available. And then also within my personal airline, I can actually go onto this online portal and I can check how many seats are available, how many people are on standby and where I am on the list. Question four, can I book standby travel in advance or do I have to wait until the day of departure? So personally with my airline, I can kind of book a flight whenever. With those partner airlines that I talked about, I can only book three months in advance and you don't have to wait for the day of departure. But personally, what I found good is booking three to two weeks in advance because then you can have a more updated idea of the loads as well. Usually it's pretty rare for someone to purchase an international flight like two weeks out in advance. Usually people purchase it months and months in advance. That's why I usually like to stick with the two to three weeks because you have a better idea idea of what the loads are going to look like. The shortest time frame from when you can purchase it is literally like before the flight closes. <laughs> you can literally book a flight on the day if you need to, which you would have seen in this video. Are there any benefits for friends and family? Personally, within my airline, I get staff travel benefits for myself and also for a travel companion. That could be like a best friend, a boyfriend, a husband, a parent. I personally always keep Brayden, my husband, <laughs> as my companion because we usually travel together and then under that I can have six family members and then as well as that I get a couple buddy passes a year but they run out pretty easily because I have a big family if I was wanting to fly on those partner airlines for my family and friends it's really dependent on the airline some airlines only allow you and your travel companion some airlines only allow you and your parents they each have their own separate rules and I don't think I can get friends to fly internationally unless they they were my travel companion and I was flying with them. How do I check in for a standby flight? So you check in normally, you check in your bags and then um, the check-in people will print out a boarding pass. That boarding pass would either have a seat number which means that you have gotten on the flight or it might come up with a standby which means that you're still on standby so you have to go to the gate and then closer to when the flight is departing they'll give you a boarding pass. So the last question is what happens if there are no seats available then you're stranded in that destination. Nah, I'm just kidding. They'll push you to the next flight that departs. So if we didn't get on that flight back to Melbourne yesterday, then they would have pushed us to the flight today flying back to Melbourne. So yeah, definitely learnt for next time. I'm going to leave a couple more days of buffer and it's so important to have a plan A, a B, C and D. <laughs> if you have any other questions about standby, put them in the comments. I'll answer them for you. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.